All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking about real music or the end of real music and doing it again in real time for a few real people out here just like you and just like me. So I'm going to be talking about the Eagles because last night they did their first show at the Sphere. Uh, I think they'd been there before maybe or this could be their first time there. I'm not sure. I know they've been to Vegas before, but this venue is a really high-tech venue, and everybody is talking about it. And the visuals from the clips I got to watch were spectacular. However, um, there is another side to this, and I'm going to be talking about it. Uh, before I talk about that, um, if you like the Eagles, and after watching this video, I would ask people to explore other musical options. I know you've been feasting on the comfort food for like 50 years now. The Eagles got their start in 1971, and uh, it's 2024. This is the Wilder Blue, and uh, I know they've got another album, and I think I'm going to go purchase the other album. Uh, and they have a brand new song out. Uh, and the new song, let me see if I can remember the title, it's called Pass It On Down, and it's excellent. So if you like the early days of the Eagles with, I would say, a more consistent emphasis on the sound that the Eagles started with, but still different, this band has their own thing. They do a great version of Seven Bridges Road, by the way, so... <laughs> That should catch your attention, right? I remember, I think it was Little Texas did a version of Seven Bridges Road in concert as well. But these guys, I think, uh, recently did an impromptu version somewhere and they uploaded and it was uh, it was pretty spectacular. So again, the Wilder Blue, check out the Wilder Blue, order their music, uh, follow the band. I, I believe that's a band that should be just breaking out everywhere but because of the music industry both country and rock there's there's no place to put them now uh where do they put the eagles well they put the eagles in the sphere and um i'm not going to say that the eagles were distracting the audience with the new visuals that they have at this place the visuals were amazing but what I did notice uh, musically, I think I need to talk about here, and I wrote something out, which when I do that, sometimes I get a little pretentious and I try to write like somebody who knows how to write, but I don't really know how to write. So this is what I said. The guitar work is often sloppy now at an Eagle show. For instance, the fiery guitar duel between the great Don Felder and Joe Walsh has been reduced to a perfunctory rehash lacking the emotion and precision between the slightly better than mediocre Stuart Smith and the still fiery but somewhat inconsistent Joe Walsh. And speaking of Walsh, his vocal delivery on Life's Been Good might remind you of an old man in a wheelchair yelling at the nurse to bring more tapioca pudding from the hospital cafeteria. The harmonies from the other band members try to drown it out, but to no avail. Walsh has never been their best singer. Glenn Fry, the late great Glenn Fry, made that clear in the infamous Eagles documentary. But this has always been a band that prided itself on great singing. Don Henley, too, sounds old. He hits the notes, and he's not embarrassing, but his voice has taken on a new texture, as if he's some... Greek god on a throne somewhere, bringing judgment upon the music world. The Eagles have embarked on another leg of their endless farewell tour. When is this tour going to end? I don't know. But it's currently at the Sphere in Las Vegas, and there are 20 scheduled dates at the Sphere, unless, of course, they extend it, which they might. The Sphere is an impressive venue that is like a giant movie theater inside a stadium dome boasting of great technology and comfort. The visuals and the experience are taking over for the music, which in the case of the Eagles needs to be done to distract the audience. 
Not that the boys don't do a good job standing there for two hours for their likely six-figure salary. Uh, that would be for each night. And then there are problems, other problems. Vince Gill singing Heartache Tonight is no better than any effort by any Eagles tribute band anywhere in the world. Again, part of the problem for the Eagles is they were known as a live band that sounded like the record. The problem of losing Glenn was never fully resolved. His son Deacon is underutilized and should be singing all of his dad's songs. If the sphere is about visuals, put a younger version of Glenn on the big screen with all of the new gadgetry that you have when it comes to technology. Deacon is not a vocal clone of his dad, but at least it looks better. The Eagles are clearly trying to maximize their profit margin at the end of their career. They've even opened up a store at the venue featuring exclusive gear and rare memorabilia on display. By the way, you can't purchase the memorabilia. It's just on display. And the gear is exclusive to the Vegas residency. <clears throat> the media, who, of course, I do pay attention to just to see what they're saying about this, are leading with a headline that the band dazzled in their first show at the Sphere. Uh, I can say with a lot of confidence that if this is dazzle, then our expectations are extremely low. And another little side issue, again, that hasn't been resolved, uh, those YouTube allegations that remain unanswered. And by the way, uh, nobody has denied or said, hey, that's not true. Nobody did a video to go up against these YouTube allegations that the band is getting help, uh, most likely from a vocal AI program or an older vocal track, which is being piped in to help Don Henley. But the show must go on, and it's all about the show and the music, well... The music be damned. The music be in second place. To witness one of my favorite bands of all time putting in this kind of performance is like watching a relative, a friend, somebody that you know, uh, slowly lose their faculties. This band was formed in 1971. I'm not sure they were meant to continue into 2025. Their second stint, Don Henley called it a second act, in the 1990s was the real deal. But since Glenn passed, there's been an identity crisis and a sharp decline in their ability to deliver a great show based on the music alone. Even the commentators on these media sites uh, make the point that the Eagles have always let the music do the talking. Well, the music isn't talking clearly the way it once did. Um, my hope is that maybe they'll just make enough money so they can all call it quits in the near future. So that's what I wrote. And then these lines uh, came to mind from a famous song. Did they do it for love? Did they do it for money? Did they do it in spite or for spite? Do you think they had to, honey? I substituted the word they. Or the word you. And maybe the long run needs to stop. They've had a, a long enough run. And so you may disagree, but I would I would go and check out some of these clips that people are uploading from the show. Again, Don Henley would probably uh, not want to see these clips, and they may not survive for too long. <laughs> That's the thing. Um, in a month or so, you go and look at an article where they're talking about the Eagles and they have clips from the show, those clips might lead to nothing once they delete them. I mean, they have a team of people um, basically scouring the internet, looking for people who went to the show and then uploaded a song. And there might be a secondary reason now as to why they're doing that. I don't think they want people to hear the band uh, in their current state. That's just my humble opinion about it. So anyway, folks, the Eagles at the sphere. Um, 
these guys in 2025, they really need to retire. Uh, Joe Walsh should probably be nowhere near a vocal microphone. I mean, if he wants to mic some other stuff like his guitar, uh, which I know it's plugged in directly, but you know, he shouldn't really be singing. I mean, even the harmonies that he puts out are just, it's like nails on a chalkboard right now. It's not good. So with that said, transitioning to this, these guys are not nails on a chalkboard. Look, folks, it's mortality, right? Again, I, I've been saying this for a couple of years now. There, There is no solution to this problem. People get old, and at some point they need to stop. And then there needs to be something that comes along where these guys pass the baton to the next generation. And these guys here are the next generation. Uh, when I discovered this band, I was like, how come nobody knows about this or very few people know about it? Um, anyway, the Wilder Blue, which again, if you like the Eagles and you want to explore some music that will take you forward for the next few years, I think you should check them out. If you're wedded to the nostalgia and you want to be entertained, look, they did this uh, Pink Floydian animation for Hotel California that was mind-blowing. It was mind-blowing. Um, but is it about the show or is it about the music? It used to be about both, but the Eagles, again, weren't really the guys doing all the technology. That was Pink Floyd and... A lot of other bands started doing that stuff, mostly proggy or heavy metal stuff. The Eagles, nah, that wasn't their thing. And so that's what's disappointing about this. You can tell that now they've just said, hey, uh, just come to the show. You'll be entertained. You'll go home happy and you'll get a great show. And you And you will, all right? If they could play eagles live or something like that the first eagles live album and put up these visuals and you went to a big venue and they had avatars of the guys in their prime to me that might actually be better it just it might be better there's a certain curiosity that's attached to knowing what the guys sound like now but then i there, i mean there's a payoff in knowing what they sound like but then there's a disappointment when you realize, wow, these guys really aren't what they used to be. And I think that's where I'm at right now. And it's just makes me sad. So that's it. Done. Uh, another video in the can. If you can support uh, this channel, uh, I do get censored. And it's a subtle thing where they recommend other videos or they don't recommend my videos. Um, Patreon is a good place to have a conversation. We have open threads where you can uh, make your own comments and other people can make comments. Also, uh, YouTube memberships, kind of more anonymous, but very helpful. If you're a YouTube member, I see you and you guys get to watch the videos before anyone else. And then uh, there's Buy Me a Coffee, which has been pretty successful. So there are three ways to support the channel. You pick out your favorite way. And uh, I'm blessed by everyone who gets involved with that. So thank you so much. You keep this going because otherwise, um, this isn't uh, this isn't as lucrative as it once was. And you end up doing it just to have fun. And at this stage, I've kind of set up shop here, and I I'd like to continue. So there you have it. God bless everyone, though. Stay safe out there. It's a crazy world.